While many have tried, only a handful can get it right. Ah, a miracle! I've silenced the princess! Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 20 actors who nail the English accent. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at non-British actors from film and TV whose attempts at the English accent are practically good enough to have us fooled. Potatoes! Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Number 20, Emma Stone, The Favourite. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. I think I caught a chill picking the herbs for your leg. That was you? Abigail. As the only non-Brit in this movie, Emma's accent could have easily stuck out like a sore thumb beside her British co-stars. While the creative team knew they wanted her for the role of the sly cousin Abigail, they still wanted to make sure she could pull off the accent first. Fortunately, after a few lessons with a dialect coach, you might have believed that she had stepped straight out of 18th century England. I am a person of honour, even if my station is not. Even if I were the last one left in this wretched place, I would remain a lady. Even the film's director, Yorgos Lathimos, was impressed with her dialect, even saying that it passed with flying colours among her coach and his English friends. I did not mean for this to happen. The Queen, she is forceful. Number 19, James Masters, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Playing the anti-hero Spike, James Masters even surprised the show's British fans when they learned that this bad boy love interest was not actually English at all. Just a peak love. The actor credits his successful imitation to his British co-star, Anthony Stewart Head, who played Rupert Giles and changed up his own accent to sound more posh for the role. When Masters resurrected the character for Angel, Americanism started seeping through without head there for a point of reference. What, are you keeping tabs on me? You're gonna give me a hard time now. Nevertheless, during his Buffy days, his accent is so smooth that if we heard it on the streets of London, we probably wouldn't bat an eyelid. He's a brother fresh air, isn't he? Thank God I don't breathe. Number 18, Hugh Jackman, Kate and Leopold. You say this is no kidnapping, you say. You mean no harm, then why is it, sir? You will not unlock the door. Playing an 1800s British man who suddenly finds himself in modern-day Manhattan, Hugh Jackson's accent is so flawless that if you close your eyes, you might feel like you may have done a spot of time travel yourself. Admittedly, when you grow up around the accent as Jackman did, thanks to his dad, you are bound to be a natural. Would you do me the honor of a dance? He also credits it to his time spent with X-Men co-stars Sir Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart. Not only is the accent velvety and mesmerizing, but he also delivers his lines with the stiff upper lip that has become synonymous with British culture. I am truly sorry if I have offended you in any way. Good night, Charles. Number 17, Lake Bell, Man Up. Ryan, 37. <laughs> Nancy, 34. <laughs> Sorry, my hand's a bit wet. It's not we. Just like her character Nancy fools Jack into believing she is someone else, Lake managed to trick the audience, as well as the film's crew, into believing that she is a born and bred Brit. From the moment she landed in the UK, she committed to the accent and stayed in character to avoid getting confused during improv scenes with co-star Simon Pegg. Yeah, I definitely want kids. I'm just... I'm not, like, freaking out about it yet. And we have to agree with Pegg when he called her accent flawless. Belle did study in the UK, admittedly giving her a bit of an edge, but her English accent is still one of the best around. You could have just told me the truth. No, I know, no. and I was going to, I really was, but then... Jessica was doing so well. Number 16, Chloe Grace Moretz, Hugo. Is that your purpose? Fixing things. Despite being set in 1930s Paris, all of the actors in this magical tale sport English accents. Before Chloe Grace Moretz became a household name, she managed to trick the film's director, Martin Scorsese, into believing she was British, thereby landing her the role of Isabelle. According to the actress, it isn't just about learning the accent, but also about understanding its rhythm. 
something she practiced while filming Kick-Ass in London. I've never seen a movie. What? Isn't it appalling? Her accent is even more effective since she really captures the essence of the British and stays in character even during the more highly charged moments throughout the story. Papa George isn't my grandfather. And he isn't a thief. You're the thief. You're nothing but a... a reprobate. Number 15. Scarlett Johansson, The Other Boleyn Girl this interesting take on historical events received mixed critical reception, but of course, everyone has an opinion on the various attempts of British accents from its not-so-British leads. You owe me nothing. I did it as a peace offering between us. Starring Scarlett Johansson and Natalie Portman as Marion and Boleyn, Scarlett's accent is definitely the more convincing of the two. Not that Portman's is totally offensive to the ears, her gentle tones and crisp pronunciations are practically regal, and she would probably have any English noble person from the 1500s completely fooled. So this is it, where the King of England sleeps. The Los Angeles Times was impressed by Johansson's English accent, and it really isn't half bad. Next to Anne, it's easy to do. Number 14, Glenn Close, 101 Dalmatians. Cruella de Vil is one of Disney's most glamorous villains, so it does not really take much to make this character stand out from the crowd. What's a pleasure? Uh, making your acquaintance. Such a sweet thought. I wish I could reciprocate. Yet, Glenn Close still manages to bring an extra layer of glamour and sophistication to the role with her devilish English accent. Her enunciation and rhythm are so distinct and eloquent compared to the rest of the cast that she commands our undivided attention in every scene she is in. No spot at all! What horrible little white rats! Uh, the spots don't come till later. You're sure? There is often a stereotype of villains having British accents, but when they sound like this, it is impossible not to find them utterly hypnotizing. Mr. Skinner. Suspicions are mounting. Police are everywhere. I want the job done tonight. Number 13, Sean Astin, The Lord of the Rings Franchise. What did he say? Don't you lose him, Samwise Gamgee. No, I don't mean to. While normally the English accents we hear on screen tend to often be either the Queen's English or Cockney from the East End of London, this one broke the mold. While playing Frodo Baggins' best friend, Samwise Gamgee, actor Sean Astin pulls off a rather convincing West Country accent. Perhaps there is something that unites American and Bristol pronunciations that helped make his so convincing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to go so far. I was just so, so angry. Here, just, just rest a bit. The lightness of this accent also provided some much-needed relief from the intensity around him. In fact, Aston's accent is so believable that to this day, some fans struggle to believe that he is actually American. Come on, Mr. Frodo. I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you. Come on! Number 12, John Lithgow, The Crown. I'm so sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just... No, no, you did well to get here. I gather half the Downing Street staff didn't. As if nailing an accent isn't hard enough, Lithgow faced the added challenge of playing a real historical figure. Fortunately for this self-professed Anglophile, he did such a stellar job that he deserves the top position in the rankings of any actor ever to take on Winston Churchill. Lithgow's Churchill is gruff but eloquent, speaking with a Queen's English we hardly hear today. People have to be angry at someone, but as a leader, one cannot simply react. Churchill was known for his speeches and talented ways with words, so it was important that Lefko uses his voice to command a room. He nails it so well that it is almost like hearing the man himself. Now that we must face the cold wind of socialism blowing through this land once more. Number 11, Peter Dinklage, Game of Thrones. If you were a frequent viewer of Game of Thrones, you might have forgotten that Tyrion Lannister actor Peter Dinklage is actually from New Jersey. I can't remember ever seeing a sane man as devoted to anything as he is to serving you. He claims he would kill for you and die for you and 
Nothing I have witnessed gives me reason to doubt him. For the better part of a decade, this actor had us fooled that he was actually from the British side of the pond. His accent sounds so natural, and with all the drama that takes place throughout, and there is a lot, you almost never hear him falter. Thank you. My life. In fact, with the countless hurdles many of the characters face throughout the series, holding on to a decent English accent must be one of the most impressive. You've been up there. On a dragon's back, you've had that power. Would you have burned the city down? Number 10, Mike Myers, The Austin Powers Franchise. Next up, a caricature of the British super spy genre, but with a comic accent that actually holds up, most of the time. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yes, Mike Myers' Austin Powers inflection is OTT, but that's all part of the charm. Power's well-rounded mutterings on all things shagadelic skirt the Queen's English stereotype, but blend it with a roughness to make it seem quite genuine. My jumbo jet! Smashing baby! Ooh, sorry. The jury's still out on fat bastard Scottish snull, but Austin's intonation is pretty groovy, baby. I'm bigger than you, I'm higher in the food chain! Get in my belly! Number 9, Angelina Jolie, Lara Croft Tomb Raider. A film which forced accent changes throughout the cast, the first Tomb Raider sees Scott actor Ian Glenn switch to English, and the Englishman Daniel Craig adopt American. You know, I think it's really cool that you still have a day job. Even though it's obviously just for show. But Angelina Jolie takes the title role, masking her US tones with Lara Croft's clipped and quintessential cadence. We can be partners and go for the big prize. The triangle of light. Yes, but who sits here? Jolie doesn't have a pitch-perfect history with accents, but this one's on the right side of believable. Bringing a high-class sound to a high-octane role, Jolie's Lara owns every scene she's in. This is a disaster. Was it programmed to stop before it took my head off? Number 8, Johnny Depp, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. To another actor who's tackled an English accent on multiple occasions with varying success. Stop blowing holes in my ship! Jack Sparrow's daggered drawl is instantly recognisable, but Johnny's Sweeney Todd trod closer to Cockney, with some listeners comparing both voices to Rolling Stone's rocker Keith Richards. At last! My arm is complete again. Ultimately, Depp's Demon Barber boasts a unique snarl, with a blend of British influences. Of course, Johnny spends most of this movie mid-song, so consistency is key. And he doesn't disappoint. And I can guarantee to give you without a penny's charge the closest shave you will ever know. Number 7, Maggie Gyllenhaal, The Honourable Woman. Acceptable accents are a shared trait for the Gyllenhaals, with Jake pulling off a passable effort for the otherwise pretty pants Prince of Persia movie. All these foreign dignitaries, I'm guessing you know a few. But Maggie deserves most credit for her role in the 2014 BBC series The Honourable Woman. Hello, <laughs> what a day. I can't tell you how heavy that robe is. In the show, Maggie plays Nessa Stein, a high-ranking businesswoman who becomes the Baroness of Tilbury. And given that most of her scenes are stacked with emotional intensity, she carries her character's voice with conviction. It's one of the many reasons she bagged a Golden Globe for the role. I was so happy this morning. Didn't even make the day. Number 6, Kevin Klein, as you like it. Kenneth Branagh's contemporary adaptation of this Shakespeare comedy suffered some scathing reviews, but Kevin Klein's performance proved a definite highlight. I can suck melancholy out of a song as a weasel sucks eggs. Starring as Jack, the Missouri-born actor won a Screen Actors Guild Award for his work thanks in large part to the effectiveness of his accent. When I did hear the motley fool thus moral, on the time, my lungs began to crow like Chanticleer. There's probably no truer test of an actor's English intonation than the bard's Elizabethan best, 
and it's a test that Klein clearly conquers. And that's despite the original play being set in Europe and Branner relocating the action to Japan for some reason. To your pleasures. I am for other than for dancing measures. Number 5. Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes There aren't many more iconic or intrinsically English characters than Sherlock Holmes, so many raised an eyebrow when Guy Ritchie cast Hollywood hotshot Robert Downey Jr. as the super sleuth in 2009. I, using musical theory, have created order out of chaos. Sure, Jude Law brings enough Englishness for the two, but could RDJ really convince in the lead role? Yes, he could. Downey Jr.'s Sherlock taps into Holmes' eccentricities with the wizened tones of someone always with the answers on the tip of their tongue. 8.30 the Royale. Wear a jacket. You wear a jacket. And any accent that holds up against Mark Strong's booming the vocals is a winner in our eyes. I warn you, Holmes, to accept that this was beyond your control, beyond what your rational mind could comprehend. What a busy afterlife you're having. Number 4. Michael McKean, Christopher Guest and Harry Shear. This is Spinal Tap. In the mid-80s, David St. Hubbins, Nigel Tufnell and Derek Smalls were better known as one of the most famous British rock bands on the planet, Spinal Tap. However, not only was the group set up to parody heavy metal music, but its three main members weren't even British. It's a bit of a departure from the kind of thing you normally play. Yeah, well, it's part of a, uh, a trilogy, really, a musical trilogy that I'm doing in D minor. US comedians Michael McKean, Christopher Guest and Harry Shear all pulled the wool over everyone's ears with their humble home county's Essex-esque approach faking their accents for the entire mockumentary. It's only rock and roll, but we like it. Thank you, thank you very much. Rock and roll! Rock and roll! Number 3. Gwyneth Paltrow, Shakespeare in Love an actress whose early career is peppered with English roles, Gwyneth Paltrow plays the English rose better than most, despite being born in LA. The actress scored international fame and an Oscar when she starred as Viola in Shakespeare in Love. This is not life, Will. It is a stolen season. Looking and sounding far from out of place, in Merry Tudor, England, her accent's all the more effective because Paltrow doesn't waver during high-tension moments. I have spoken with your father. So, my lord, I speak with him every day. A romantic comedy period drama with an American taking the lead, this film might have been a laughing stock. Instead, it was the toast of critics everywhere. <gasps> oh, happy dagger! This is thy sheep. Number 2. Renee Zellweger, Bridget Jones Franchise. To another icon of Englishness, but another brought to the big screen by an American actress. Oh, holy Jesus. Renee Zellweger puts in a career defining turn as Bridget Jones, whose eponymous diary fuels one of the UK's most popular rom coms. Bridget Jones, wanton sex goddess with a very bad man between her thighs. Mum. Hi. Zellweger was taught her accent by the same voice coach as Paltrow had worked with for Viola, Barbara Bickery, and Bridget's voice now seems as much a part of her character as big pants and embarrassing fancy dress. A playful, prim and proper tone, it certainly catches the attentions of Messrs Cleaver and Darcy. Definitely an occasion for genuinely tiny knickers. Number 1. Meryl Streep, The Iron Lady It's one thing to tackle the vocal nuances of a fictional character, but quite another to recreate the pitch and range of a figure from history. One must be brave if one is to take the wheel. Meryl Streep stepped into Margaret Thatcher's shoes for The Iron Lady in 2011, receiving widespread acclaim for her portrayal of the controversial PM. I will not negotiate with criminals or thugs. The Falkland Islands belong to Britain, and I want them back. And Streep's award-winning performance includes some spot-on voice work. The celebrated US actress plays on Thatcher's polished tones, 
as if they were her own, commanding authority whenever she speaks. It's inflection perfection on a prime ministerial level. If you take the tough decisions, yes, people will hate you today, but they'll thank you for generations. We'll forget you entirely. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.